The grid is lining up for race number two of the day here with the BMW Race Days Compact Cup at Rockingham. Groups B and C about to head out onto the circuit for the second time for the Group B drivers, the first time for the Group C drivers. And it is going to be Joe Wiggin on the pole position with Sam Carrington Yates, our race one winner alongside. Jim Benson and Simon Walker Hansel, row two with Steve Daly and Neil Roach on the third row. Row four is John Watt and Owen Hunter. Row five for Matt Smith and James Nutbrown, whilst row six is Craig Jameson and Chris Hack. Row 7 for David Whitmore and Giles Dawson. Row 8, Ari Ross and Jack Drury. Row 9, Steve Drury and Mark Skeets. And then the 10th row is Simon Welch with Gordon McMillan alongside. Mark Armstrong and David May on row 11. Row 12, David Ashforth and Martin Gadsby. The 13th row, Andrew Partridge and Graham Kersley. And the back of the grid, Bill Redrop and Daniel Devereaux. So 28 cars, 15 minutes, and the Rockingham International Super Sports Car Long Circuit should all make for plenty of entertainment. As we saw in race one, it is Joe Wiggin on the pole position and our race one winner, Sam Carrington Yates, starting alongside of him. Who makes the best start from the front row? About to find out. Away we go. Well, the answer is definitely not. Joe Wigan makes a terrible start from pole position. So it will, for the second time today, be Sam Carrington Yates that leads them into the banking at turn one. Jim Benson in the orange, blue and silver machine is coming through to challenge for second and takes second. It's then side by side for third between Steve Daly and uh, Simon Walker Hansel as they make their way down into the braking zone. Carrington Yates on the inside for the race lead, though. Jim Benson goes around the outside of him as they turn into the left-hander. They're still wheel to wheel wheel. Further back, Neil Roach gets tagged sideways by Matt Smith through the Dean hairpin. On board with Neil now and now he's making contact with John Watt who tried to close the door across the front of him. Up in front though, look, Jim Benson has just gone into the race lead. Jim Benson takes the race lead at uh, Yentwood and unfortunately for Sam Carrington Yates, he's been rather freight trained there because it looks as though, uh, yes, Steve Daly's gone through and so too has Simon Walker Hansel. So it's all changed at the front of the field. There we see it. It's Benson from Daly from Walker Hansel the top three. Carrington Yates is fourth but Joe Wiggin now goes up the inside of him and takes that away down on the brakes into Kirby and so too through goes Owen Hunter I think that was wasn't it and now we're on board with Neil Roach in the 81 car he's going through as well a disastrous start then for Sam Carrington Yates he's dropped all the way down from the outside of the front row but essentially the race lead into turn one all the way down into seventh position by halfway around the first lap. There is the number 22 machine. That's Steve Drury who has had an issue halfway around the first lap. He appears to be pulling into a potential retirement, unfortunately, in the number 22 machine. The leaders, though, are exiting Tarzan. It's Benson from Daly. Those two getting away slightly now from Walker Hansel in third. Wigan fourth. Uh, fifth position then for Owen Hunter. Then side by side for sixth. As Sam Carrington Yates tries to come back around the outside of Neil Roach into the chicane. That won't work, though. And he's going to lose another place now to Owen Hunter, who gets himself through. So that's now eighth position for Sam Carrington Yates. Does that a start to this second race for our first race winner. He now is under pressure from James Nutbrown, who is also in his second race of the day. But James, I don't think, quite had enough traction out of the head to get alongside, did he? So Benson, Daly, Walker, Hansel, Wigan and Hunt in the top five. Then Neil Roach, John Watt, Sam Carrington, Yates, James Nutbrown and Matt Smith rounding out the top ten. Down towards the Dean hairpin they go for the second time on board with James Nook Brown Sam County Yates goes up the inside he's gone too far though and he clatters into the side of Neil Roach well that was a real shame he was trying to go up the inside of John Watt and braked himself and so eager was he to try and gain up gain back to the ground that he lost on the first lap. He unfortunately made a bit of a rash move there and made contact with Neil Roach. He's still going though, is Sam Carrington Yates. The car looks a little bit more dog-eared now than it did at the start of the race. But he does keep Matt Smith uh, behind him for the time being and also James Nookbrand, who lost out to Matt at the start of this lap. Through the piff path they come. Well, Sam Carrington Yates has been very entertaining to watch in the first lap and a half of this race, hasn't he? Not necessarily for the right reasons, but uh, it just goes to show how competitive the championship is. The man who dominated, really, the first race of the day is now slipping backwards and finding himself in all sorts of drama. On board with the number 88 car of James Nook Brown as we head through the left-hander of Graceland's, that is Matt Smith in front of us. We couldn't be any closer to Matt Smith in front of us coming through the left-hander. Is there a chink of a gap on the inside? There's more than a chink, in fact. And uh, James Nook Brown, I think, is going to go through here. It was a nicely judged move on the break, way down into the Tarzan hairpin. Didn't run right out to the edge of the track, though. Does that mean Matt Smith still is alongside us? I'm looking to the left. Yes, there he is. Matt Smith is still alongside us. And Matt Smith now has the inside line for the Brooke chicane. 
and takes the place straight back again. So, really racing between those two. That just takes a bit of the pressure away now from San Carrington Yates in front of us. We'll see whether he can maybe now try and regroup and work his way back up the order. So, there are the leading quintet of cars then. It's Benson in the lead. Oh dear, maybe not. We'll uh, have a look at that in a moment because Harry Ross, unfortunately, has had a drama down at the chicane. It's the number 35 car of Gordon McMillan that he's tangled with. Here are the race leaders then. It is Benson leading the way, Daly second. This is the fight for third between Joe Wiggin, Simon Walker Hansel, and Owen Hunter. This trio of cars very, very close together indeed to make the way through the Dean Hairpin for the third time of asking. Up towards Yentwood, and Hunter looks maybe to have a go on the brakes into the right hander on board with Jim Benson then. And what he wants to do now is what Sam Carrington Yates did in the first race break away from the fighting that's going on behind him. This is such a momentum circuit that once a group of cars get themselves together and start squabbling for position, they lose a whole lot of lap time. And Jim Benson would really like to capitalise on that. He seems to be doing just that, doesn't he? He's getting away slightly from Stephen Daly, who's dropping ever further into the clutches of Joe Wiggin, our pole sitter, who's been up and down like the proverbial yo-yo in this race, hasn't he? Started from pole, dropped down to about fifth on the first lap, and then climbed his way back up the order. Neil Roach is in to have bodywork removed from the front of his car after that contact that he had with Carrington Yates down at the Dean Head. I believe maybe a third car was involved in that as well. On board with Stephen Daly now, the man in second place, the Scott, who's in most of his racing up in uh, in Scotland, unsurprisingly, at Knock Hill. And um, although he acquainted himself pretty well with the short, sharp Grand Hatch Indy circuit, the first round of the championship, he's finding Rockingham uh, a very different challenge. He's doing a, a pretty good job of it so far, though, isn't he? Running in second place. We've had a change for fourth look because uh, Owen Hunter has found his way past Simon Walker Hansel. So, swap around between those two cars. Owen Hunter, who showed strongly in the first race of the day as well, is uh, he eventually came home in fourth place, didn't he, Owen Hunter, in race one of the day? And he's up into fourth place again in race number two. Time to walk hands, of course, was on the podium for the first time in race one, but he's just dropped down to the back end of the top five. So the leading quintet of cars fairly well spaced out now as they make their way around the banking for the fourth time. Jim Benson's pulled out a 1.1 second lead now over Stephen Daly, but outside the top five is John Watts still sixth, Carrington Yates seventh, Luke Brown eighth, Matt Smith up to ninth. And David Whitmore is now into the top ten. Good one there for David May as well, looking uh, uh, 13th position finished outside the top 20 in his first race. Now, on board with Stephen Daly, and I would say we're getting a bit closer to Jim Benson at this point. The race leader is, or had been, escaping up the road slightly, but Stephen Daly, as he gets ever more used to the track, is getting quicker and quicker and quicker. First race of the day for both of these drivers, of course, and for Joe Wigan, in fact, in third place. They're all drivers in Group C. The group's decided after qualifying, but there is no real difference in pace between the quickest cars in either groups A, B or C. They're all capable of running at the front of the field. Down towards Gracelands, they climb up and over the hill. Inch perfect through there for both Benson and Daly, in fact. And as they now drop back down the hill towards Tarzan, Daly, of course, has one eye in the mirror because he knows Joe Wigan is more or less within shooting range. Through the tight hairpin, cars scrabble for track on the exit of what is another very flat corner. Very technically demanding circuit, the Rockingham track. So uh, that's why we see drivers do take a little bit of time just to get used to it if it's their first visit. Down towards the Brookshire Cane. Looks as though to me John Watt is closing in on this group as well now. In sixth place, the black and red number 34 car. That's Owen Hunter in the black and red number 47, who is now onto the back of Joe Wiggin and making good forward progress. But yes, uh, you can see this is almost now a sextet of cars in the leading group. Carrington Yates is seventh, Luke Brown is eighth, Matt Smith comes across the line in ninth position. The back of the tenth looks fairly entertaining as well, doesn't it? That one uh, still raging on. Uh, and it's David Whitmore who has that 10th place. These are battles outside the top 10, though, uh, including the number 23 car. That is uh, Graham Kersley, Ari Ross in the golden black number 12 car, recovering after his contact down at uh, the Brooks came earlier on with Gordon McMillan. These are drivers who are racing uh, for about 15th place or so fighting, as we said in race one, just as intense wherever you look in the field. And Harry Ross uh, defending the inside line through turn one. It's a brave man. He'll try and go around the outside through the banking at uh, turn one. And that's exactly what Graham Kersley was trying to do. But can't quite find a way past Harry as they turn their way into the Dean Hairpin. The positions stay as they were. Right out over the curb for Graham Kersley. Both those drivers with novice crosses on the back of their car. In fact, a lot of the drivers in the Compact Cup with novice crosses. It is a great way to take your first step on the motor racing ladder. The cars are relatively cheap and affordable. 
you don't have to do that much to them or hardly anything to them really to make them quick and uh, they're good fun to drive fairly forgiving as well so it's a, a great advert this for compact cup racing not only that we have large grids but very competitive grids and also grids that have a lot of relatively inexperienced drivers number nine car of uh, martin gadsby in this group as well Raw, raw motorsport car. Meanwhile, back at the head of the field, it's Benson who's getting away now from what is turning into a three-way fight for second, isn't it, really, between Stephen Daly, Joe Wiggin, and Owen Hunter. Through the banking they go at turn one. They just dip the wheels down below the white line because it's a bit flatter down there, and that helps hook the car through the turn. A bit of a NASCAR technique there. Benson is 1.7 seconds clear of this group. That's not a huge gap. If you were to make a mistake or if any one of these three were to break free, they may be able to go after him. Debris there gets kicked up by the second place man Stephen Daly. I'd say though, he's becoming less and less interested in what Jim Benson's doing and more interested in what Joe Wiggins doing behind him, behind him because Stephen knows that the slightest little slip up here and Joe Wiggin will go through, but so too more, more than likely will Owen Hunter. So Stephen has to be inch perfect here in second place. Through the pith path they go again, dropping down the hill towards Kirby. Stephen Daly thought about defending the inside line, then realised that's not really an overtake opportunity. Harry Ross is still going meanwhile. Oh, and this is Gordon McMillan again. They're both going up the inside of Martin Gadsby. And almost for the second time this race, Ross and McMillan make contact. Gadsby quite sensibly there. I think he runs right around the outside of the track to avoid getting involved in that particular fight. On board with John Watt now. And he has caught up to the back of the, uh, the leading train of cars now. We're going up the inside of Simon Walker Hansel. That was a brilliant move on the brakes into Tarzan Hair. But up in front though, looks like going for second place because Joe Wiggins up the inside of Stephen Daly. And Stephen Daly gets edged out over the grass. And just as I feared may happen, as Wiggins goes through, Owen Hunter now senses the opportunity to do the same thing. He's on the wrong side of the road into the Brook Chicane. Ducks back down to the inside line. Is it going to work? No, not quite close enough. So one position loss for Stephen Daly but it could have been worse. Joe Wiggin now moves his way back into the top two, having started on pole position. That's where we sort of expected him to be running, but he's uh, had to get there the hard way, really, hasn't he? Wiggin then goes second, Daly down to third, Hunter is still fourth, and then you've got that John Watt and um, Simon Walker Hansel dice that was going on further back as well. Those two changed hands on that lap, so that was an eventful lap. Headlights ablaze for Joe Wiggins, so he's on a bit of a charge. We know he's got the pace because uh, in qualifying, he lapped within a tenth or so of Sam Carrington Yates out in front. By virtue of the fact Joe was in Group C, he gets the pole position for this race, even though his lap time was about half a tenth or so slower than Sam Carrington Yates. Joe Wiggins then into second place. What can he do about Jim Benson, if anything? They're fast running out of time as well. Only about five minutes left in this race through Chapman Curve. Can Daly fight back, I suppose? That's the next question as well, isn't it? David May, meinwhile, has got himself embroiled in a battle with Mark Armstrong, who locks up and runs wide and spins. Well, that made life easier for David May, didn't it? As uh, Armstrong sort of fell off the circuit in front of him. So David May moves up another position. That, I think, puts him in 14th place now, if memory serves. Race leaders, though, are approaching Gracelands. Joe Wigan is now into second place. Took a few bites of the cherry to find the apex there, didn't he? We did get there in the end. And that means that Stephen Daly is not able to close in any further on the Mac Attack racing car in front. Through the right-hander at Tarzan, clip the kerb. Get on the power as early and aggressively as you dare. You don't want to spin up those rear tyres and lose traction onto the school straight, though. And in fact, Stephen Daly is now really having to defend because Owen Hunter is closer to him than Daly is to Wigan. And as they start to fight, it's allowing John Watt in the number 34 car to close in as well out onto the banking, who gets the best drive up the hill towards the concrete wall. Looks to me like it was Owen Hunter. He'll tuck into the slipstream now as they head towards the speedway turn one. These cars do have uh, a slipstream effect. They put quite a big hole in the air. They're not the most aerodynamic of cars. It does keep the racing nice and close, doesn't it? Through turn one, down towards Dean. Is Hunter close enough? I've seen moves made from further back than this. He's certainly looking to the inside line. Stephen Daly's left the door wide open. Owen Hunter locks up the brakes. He'll get to the apex first. No, Stephen Daly hangs on to the position resiliently. That was good driving, that, from Scott. Keeps hold of this third place, and this is all valuable championship points. A big learning experience, this, for Stephen Daly. He has very little to no experience of most of the uh, English circuits. As I said, did most of his racing, the early part of his career and his Compact Cup career up in Scotland. Through the Piff Path again. And Joe Wiggin 
all of a sudden seems a bit closer to uh, Stephen Dale, or Daly seems closer to Wigan, I should say. A bit of trim hanging off in the back of Stephen's car as well. I'm not quite sure where that happened. I don't recall seeing him involved in any contact in this race. It's been a very clean race so far. Up towards Gracelands again, and Daly frustratingly he, he, he's just close enough to Wigan that he's sensing an opportunity but he's not really close enough to actually have a proper go here is he Jim Benson is still not that far away either less than two seconds ahead of these two at the head of the field back out of the banking over the white lines and curbs down the school straight into the brook chicane at the end of the lap again Owen Hunter and John Water close enough to become a part of this potentially before the end of the race. We'll wait and see what happens exactly. Back out onto the banking again. Hunter not quite as close this time to Stephen Daly as he was a lap ago, it must be said. Across the start-finish line. And Joe Wiggin, I would say, is starting to make his escape now, isn't he? Don't think anyone's going to get there, certainly since we're now on the final lap of the race. So Jim Benson with a two and a quarter second lead now over Joe Wigan in second place. Steve Daly is third, Owen Hunter fourth. John Watt it is who rounds out the top five. Outside the top ten, by the way, Dave Whitmore's down to 11th place now because Chris Hack has moved his way inside the top ten. So that, uh, that was that 10th place battle that was raging all race really and still is just as close now as ever it was. Out through Yetwood for the final time though from Stephen Daly. Can we do anything about Joe Wigan in front of us through the long, long, long right-hander at Chapman Curve and then into the Piff Path? None of this though is really where you see much overtaking. This is single line stuff through here. The next place that you'll really like to see the pass made is at Tarzan and that all depends on the run you get out of the next corner, Gracelands. If anything, it's Owen Hunter who in his excitement has flashed his, he his uh, hazard lights on. Look, he may be the one to make a move on Stephen Daly through this part of the circuit. I don't think Daly's quite as quick as some of the cars around him from what we've seen on previous laps anyway. Through Graceland, down towards the Tarzan hairpin. Daly is not feeling the need to defend though. Is he going to rue that decision? No, closes right in on Cho Wiggin in fact. So he was very late on the brakes that time uh, into the right hand hairpin. Just a few more corners to go though. And as we head towards them, Jim Benson is about to make it five from five, isn't it? Another new winner in the BMW Race Days Compact Cup. If he keeps it on the island through the final few corners, Jim Benson is going to take his first win of 2016. He comes out of the banking, he slides up to the concrete wall and takes the chequered flag. Jim Benson wins race number two here at Rockingham. Joe Wiggin with a topsy-turvy race is second. Stephen Daly is third. Owen Hunter comes home in fourth with John Watt in the end, breathing down his neck in fifth. Simon Walker Hansen is sixth. Sam Carrington Yates will come across the line in seventh. This is a fight further back though as uh, Jack Drury tries to find a way past David Whitmore. This is for 11th position uh, and you can see Chris Hack in the orange black car pulled away from him slightly in 10th over the last few laps. But it is Jim Benson then who is your race winner here at Rockingham in race two of the weekend for BMW Race Day's Compact Cup and another driver whose name we have to start considering now as a potential championship challenger. So here is confirmation of your result for race two then. It's a win for Jim Benson by 2.3 seconds in the end over Joe Wigan in second, Steve Daly is third, Owen Hunter fourth and John Watt in fifth. Then it's Simon Walker Hansel, Sam Carrington Yates, James Nut Brown, Matt Smith and Chris Hack who rounds out the top ten. Dave Whitmore was 11th ahead of Jack Drury, Mark Skeet, David May and Ari Ross in 15th. Then Mark Armstrong, Andrew Partridge, Simon Welch, Gordon McMillan and Graham Kersley round out the top 20. Martin Gadsby was 21st with David Ashpore, Ashforth and Bill Redrock rounding out the finishes. We lost Neil Roach, Craig Jamieson, Giles Dawson and Steve Drury. The fastest lap went the way of John Watt. Well, the maiden winner arm, it's Jim Benson, a fantastic victory, and uh, you had to work hard for that one, but then the NG won by a little bit of a margin, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was great to get a great start. Uh, there's a little bit of tussling to start with, but uh, I managed to pull a gap. I think behind me, I could see in my mirrors, we were seeing uh, a few people fighting, enabling me to build a bit of a gap. Um, I'm just glad I was able to maintain that. It seemed as though as they were fighting, it still kept you honest in terms of they were still there to take advantage if you slipped up, so you had to keep your wits about you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was conscious of the gap uh, two laps ago. I saw the lap, last lap board. Uh, I knew I had a bit of a margin. I eased off a little bit, but I thought one mistake and, and it could cost me. So uh, I still had to keep on it all the way, really. So for the second race, are you open to try and repeat that? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's, it's my first victory, so uh, I'm going to savour this one for sure. 
Um, and uh, I mean, many thanks to the sponsors. Uh, Rutec put a great car under me. And of course, this year we, we're taking on a new sponsor, EAG. Uh, so it's great to put, put the car on the top step for them. Joe, second place for you, great result, but it was a bit of a tricky one at the start, just talk us through it. Yeah, I can't get off the line for some reason, uh, same problem at Brands, but we, we had the pace really, but we just, you know, we made some good moves, worked hard and got it through. Um, the car was mint, so thanks to AW Track Sport, uh, they, they, did a, they did a great job for me, so shake and bake to them, they did, they did, the, did it all for us really, it helped us out, but yeah. Jim and Steven State, you proved to be a pretty tricky competition, so it looks like you really had to really put a lot of effort in. Yeah, there's some good drivers out there, like Benson, we've had five different winners this year. It's about time I did it, I've been quick enough, but we've had five different winners and Daly's a good driver. I mean, everyone on the grid in the top ten is good drivers, so I think we just, we muscled them a little bit and went a little bit harder than them this time. Steven, three out of three for podiums in that race, and it was a pretty tricky one there. You were battling all the way for second place. Yeah, battling all the way for second place. Um, Ligon there, he was phenomenal there. Um, just, I'm thankful to be on the podium this weekend. We've had nothing but problems this weekend. Uh, totally changed the car last night, and it seems to have worked, so we're happy. I'd just like to say a big thank you to all my sponsors, uh, Lovie and Trailers, Sh Alan's Coaches, uh, Casey Motorsport, uh, CL Brakes, Ben's Bike Chocolates, everyone that's helped out this weekend. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be here, so thank you very much. It seems to say that you're adapting pretty quickly to the English BMWs after your dominant year in the Scots last year. I mean, last year in the Scottish BMWs, we won 60 out of 60 races, so we had to, we had to come down here and try something. We knew we were going to be competitive, but, um, you know, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Excellent. Well, it's good to see you making good progress, and fingers crossed. The race too. Thank you very much. Cheers.